welcome back to Operation Awesome UK. Like I said, we're going to start trying to do some more stuff that isn't con vlogs, just to try and get me back in the swing of video making. So today, as some of you might know, I'm planning to go to the third Critter Castle meet. And for that, I'm planning on wearing Vex and I'm planning on debuting Veth. So before I could do that, both of these wigs needed washing, they both needed restyling, they both needed replatting. So I thought I'd film myself going through that process and hopefully be able to explain my method of maintenance. I've seen a lot of discussion around wigs on social media recently and it seems like a lot of people are getting confused about wig maintenance and how best to care for wigs and make sure that you get the longest life out of them you can. So I just thought I'd go through my method using these two as examples and hopefully it will help. Just to be clear, I've basically done the exact same method on both of these. The only difference is the number of plaits that they have. So therefore I've sort of filmed twice and smooshed the two together. So it might be a bit confusing later on in the editing of the video where it suddenly seems to flip from a black wig to a brown wig and back again. That's simply just because I got a better shot with one or the other. Before we start, I thought I'd go through the very basics of my wig care kit. So, starting from the start, first thing you need is a wide toothed comb. Of course, use an afro comb. I know some people use tangle teasers, I've personally not. My method is generally just to do a quick finger comb first and then go through with the wide tooth comb. The reason for using the wide tooth comb is because obviously with normal hairbrushes, it doesn't matter if they pull out some hair. And if you look at your hairbrush at home, you'll probably see that there is hair mats from where it has been pulling out your own hair. But wide tooth combs are gentler. And obviously if we pull hair out of our wig, it's not going to grow back. Next, what I find invaluable for doing combing is one of these. I have just realised I don't know what these clips are called. I've always just called them grabber clips or claw clips, but I think that's not their correct name. Anyway, one of, one of these. You'll see later it helps with sectioning off hair. If you have multiple, that could be easier. I've also used longer, thinner clips, like what hairdressers use when they're sectioning off your hair to do layers. It just makes it a lot easier to work through the wig to have some grips on hand. Next, we have, so not appearing in this video, actually, but I'm still going to mention it because it's very useful, Main and Tame Detangler Spray. This is the best detangler spray that I've found. I got this off Amazon for about six pounds pounds. It is sold in some actual physical shops now. I think I've seen it in Superdrug here in the UK and I think it is sold in shops in the US but for other places you may need to buy it online. With this spray all you do is you basically just spray it onto the tangled wig and then comb it through with the long tooth comb. It's a silicone based spray so it will make the wig very slippery. The only warning I would give when using this is that because it is silicone based anything else that the spray hits like say the floor under the wig that you're working on is also going to be incredibly slippery and I made an enormous trip hazard in my house for about three weeks with this once when using it downstairs on a wooden floor because it's silicone, it doesn't evaporate like water spray does, you have to actually physically clean it off and it will make anything slippery. It makes wooden floors slippery, it made carpet slippery. What I generally do now whenever I'm using it is that I will have the wig up against a wall and I'll have a towel underneath the wig just to catch any spray and then it's less of a health and safety hazard. Next we have some hair bubbles or hair ties or hair elastics whatever you want to call them. The ones I prefer to use for wigs are these little clear ones. As you can see on this plait they're very hard to see on the plait and as you can see here they're very easy to just cover up with a ribbon or with a clip because oftentimes you find especially with cosplay wigs the hair tie that's actually the hair tie that you want to use, like ribbon or whatever, doesn't actually tie the hair that well. So using a clear bobble underneath is just a good way to make sure it doesn't slip. Also with these ones, they're so small, they can be used for if you struggle with plaiting, you can section off the hair into three small ponytails with these and then just cut them out afterwards because they're cheap and easy and you can just get more. Right, next we get into the stuff that I have for styling and fixing wigs after the detangling process. So first up we have the old cosplayers standby hairspray. I've found that this got to be glued is the best one I can get. This is my little travel version that I tend to take with me to hotels and cons. I have a bigger can over there as well but this is easier to film. Next we have hair gel. So the reason for 
putting gel on wigs even when you're not trying to get them into a super stiff style it discourages from tangling especially if it's pulled into a ponytail or a plait you can just stick some on the very tip of the ponytail here just to try and encourage it into a point and to discourage it from fraying the two sorts that i normally use are i use this l'oreal paris hashtag bun spray which is kind of like a mix of a hairspray and a gel it sprays on really fine it does stiffen it and it does work really good like it's flyaways and it's also really good just on my hair for whenever i have to tie it back for when i'm wearing a partial wig like say a hair extension it means that i can just smooth it back the other sort i use for when i want to avoid the shine that this tends to leave is this vo5 styling wax that's what's on jasmine with this it's literally just a case of you just pull a little out smooth it out and then run it through the very tips of the hair and it just keeps the tips of the hair together and prevents it again from tangling or frizzing one of the last tools that i'm going to be using in this video are my trusty straighteners these are some that i got from tk max feel the heat intelligent digital stylers from diva professional styling but you don't need to use these obviously any straighteners will do preferably you want to get straighteners that you can adjust the heat on because you want to make sure that the heat that you're using is as low as possible this one for example goes from 220 degrees celsius to 120 degrees celsius so everything that i'm doing i'm going to be doing on the lowest 120 degrees celsius heat before we start with anything before we start with any of the cleaning the first thing we need to check is what is your wig made of the main two kind of branches of wig are your wig is either made of human hair or horse hair possibly animal hair or it is synthetic it's always worth checking if you're not sure it's better to err on the side that it's probably synthetic because human hair wigs tend to be a bit rarer and they tend to be a little more expensive depends on where you get them most wigs that you'll buy online will be synthetic i own a couple of human hair wigs which are ones that i bought in an actual wig store in leeds those sort of wigs you tend to find more in places where they're marketing for an everyday wig or people who wear wigs not for cosplay shall we say people who are wearing wigs just for day-to-day -day reasons the other thing to check is is your wig heat resistant now all human hair wigs are heat resistant so if you know that your wig is human hair you don't need to worry about this step but if it's synthetic it is worth checking most decent wigs will be at least a bit heat resistant but if it's something that's a bit on the cheap side especially one that comes from a place like party city or something like that it probably won't be most reputable online sellers should state in the wig listing if the wig is heat resistant because it's a selling point if they don't say it then it's kind of it kind of assumes that they're not it's worth checking with the seller and if you're not sure then it's worth testing it out what's best to do is just to get a piece of the hair that you're sure won't be seen get your straightness or a heat tool and just gently work a very small section that you know can be cut off without much loss if the wig just straightens then it's fine if the wig starts to melt and break then it's not heat resistant stop abort abort mission so the last thing to cover before we get into it is what product we're using to wash the wig with there are specific wig shampoos and wig cleaning products you can use i do and have used a couple but i haven't honestly noticed much better effects than using the method that i'm currently using which is more of a budget method if what you have is a human hair wig then what you'll want to use is johnson's baby shampoo however because these are both synthetic wigs today i'm using some fabric softener just a capful in the wash it doesn't have to be the fabric softener i'm using any softener will do this is just because obviously wigs aren't hair and especially synthetic wigs aren't hair they are more like polyester on your head so you need to wash them with laundry products not with actual hair product i'm also going to quickly mention the other major difference between these two wigs this wig is brand new it has never been worn before it was fresh out of the packet at the start of this week this wig however has been worn to a couple of events so it has some lingering hairspray left in it it's felt the effects of wind so it was in a worse state than this one was before you wash your wig if you possibly can take your time to fully detangle it using the method that i'm going to reveal later and feel free to use as much detangling spray as you want because you're going to wash it out anyway it just makes the later steps so much easier if your wig is already at least detangled to a point before you wash it. 
Okay, so before I put this wig in the wash, I just want to try and show with a close-up why I need to do it. So if you look, you can maybe see that it's really, really shiny. And I can tell by feeling it that it's really slippery. And also if we look down here towards the bottom of the wig, you can maybe see it's a bit dark. But you can maybe see how it's got a lot of static here from the brushing and just generally if I hold it out like that maybe you can maybe see like a bit staticky. Come here sweetheart. What we're going to do is we're going to try and reduce this shine and get it so that it's a bit more soft and a bit nicer for me to style. So yeah we're going to take this and get it washed. What we're going to do is we're going to get a bucket and we're just going to fill it with lukewarm water, not hot and not too cold. You want it to be lukewarm. You then want to add a capful of the fabric conditioner or the baby shampoo if that's what you're using and then just give it a good mix in. I'm using my bare hand but if you have sensitive skin you might want to use a glove for this part. When it's fully mixed in you want to get your wig and you just want to gently put it into the bucket fully submerging it in the water and giving it a few turns to make sure it's fully in and submerged. We're then going to leave this for a few hours. I like to leave it for at least four to let the softener fully get to work. Once we've left it for long enough we're going to pull the wig out. I'm just putting it in the bath to make sure it's not dripping. We're just going to empty the bucket out. We're going to put our shower on the coldest setting and just quickly rinse through and rinse out any of the remaining soap bubbles. Make sure you're incredibly thorough with this because any conditioner that you leave in could cause skin irritation and it could also lead to little dandruff looking like soap flakes being left in your wig. After we rinse it we're going to wring out as much of the excess water as we can and then leave it on top of the shower head to dry. If you prefer you can put it on top of a wig head with a bucket underneath. If you have any lingering dampness you need to get rid of after it's been air drying for a while, place it on a towel and fold the towel over and then just pat it dry. Don't rub it or do any friction. You just want to pat it and sort of squeeze the liquid out. If you have a human hair wig, you can use a hair dryer instead of air drying and patting it dry. Or if you have a hair dryer that works on a cool setting, you can also try that. However, I find that Using a hairdryer on my wigs tends to leave them in an even worse tangle, so I prefer to just let them air dry and then pat them dry. So this is that wig that I showed you the closest of straight out of the shower before I've given it any kind of a combing. Obviously it's currently quite matted and in a bit of a mess, but you can see the top here is a lot less unnaturally shiny. I can tell from feeling it, it feels a lot less slippery and feels a lot more like there's some grip to it. I just wanted to kind of show the before and after. So we're going to start the styling. What I've got here is a polystyrene head that you can cheaply buy on eBay and this is the stand from my mannequin that uh, you want? The stand from my mannequin that I've just taken the body off and then I've added a little bit of blue tack into the top of the thing so that that head will stay on it quite nicely. And we're just going to put it on. And now we're just going to start combing this through. Right, so I've got a wide tooth comb and I've got this little gripper. I'm just going to Oh, this hair feels so much nicer already. I'm going to reach out and grab. And I'm just going to pull loose a front section. I'm just going to go from the bottom. Uh, whenever we get a knot, we're just sort of hooking and hooking and pulling it, you sort of push it apart and then pull at the knot and most of the time that will remove it. This is why if your wig is super super knotted it can be worth finger combing it through before you start combing it through with a actual wide tooth comb just to like get a, find the worst 
you want to be gentle you don't want to be yanking hair out because obviously if you yank hair out it's not going to grow back there you are so i don't know if you can see the knot is here and so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna hook my fingers around the knot and pull just hook and pull I can sort of try and slide that knot down. Oh, you are stubborn, you are. Yeah. Sometimes you do just get like a lump of wig hair just comes out. This is where, like I said, I'm just going to attack the underneath a bit just to make sure that that is all equally. Because obviously I'm planning on plaiting this and so the under part of this is going to be visible. So I need to make sure that it is presentable. Right, so that is fully detangled. You can see that I can pretty much run my hands through it for every part of it, and I'm not running into any real resistance. I can put the comb through it, it's completely fine. This is the ideal state you want to get your wigs to, is where you can just run a comb through them and they're fine, right from the top to the bottom. This is still a little bit damp, so I'm gonna give it a second to completely finish getting dry. Okay, so we're back. Now we're gonna get on doing a bit of maintenance and getting it ready to be stored and styled. What we have is right at the front here where it's gotten a lot of friction from previous wears. So I don't know if you can see that well on this camera, but I can feel that the ends of this wig are really, are really frizzy sort of fry ends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a straightener and I'm going to go around the bottom of this. This is something that happens a lot with synthetic wigs. It's just a case of friction because friction especially is going to affect the very tips of the hair just because that's where you're going to rub it. As you can see, or maybe not because it's very hard for me to film it. It's on the lowest temperature it'll do. So what we're going to do grab this fry end and we're just going to even heat resistant wigs are only heat resistant to a certain point so it's still a good idea if you're going to use heat tools on them to use them on a very low heat the same is true for if you're wanting to put curls in a wig, if your wig is heat resistant, you can just use normal curling tongs, but again, on a low heat. If they are heat resistant, then the best way to put the curls back in is to roll your wig up in some wig curlers and then put it in a pot of boiling water because the boiling water will mean that the heat is not directly hitting the wig fibers and so they shouldn't melt. I've personally never done this, but Rosso, who is my co-collaborator on this channel, her Merida wig, is done using the rag curlers and boiling water method and she assures me that it's safe and she basically ran it through with me when I mentioned I was going to make this video. It is an issue that you run into that curls do tend to drop when you wash so you will have to put them back in. Do you want to face the camera again because that's what's polite. I'm going to turn this off put it on the heat mat that I have over here. Once you've got your ends suitably defried, next we're going to prepare this for storage because it's very rare that you'd be in this situation if you've just washed it, you've just detangled it and now it's cotton time. Before you store it, if it's a longer wig like this, you will want to plait it. The plaiting will prevent the wig from tangling around itself in the back. Ideally, whenever the wig is not on your head, it wants to be plaited. If it's not on your head or on a wig stand, it wants to be plaited because wigs will tangle at nothing. To try and decrease that happening, what you can do if you're wearing a wig loose like this, when you have it nice and combed out like this before you put it on, you can comb through some main and tame detangling spray or comb through some very lightweight hair gel or comb through some hairspray. That will help prevent the wig from tangling up in itself and maintain its shape. Don't use gel that's too stiff. You want to use something that's got like a natural sort of ness to it. One that's, one that's aiming to keep away flyaways rather than keep your hair up in spikes. However, Vex, because of her style, 
is going to be in a big plait and I'm actually going to fishtail her because this wig is not actually as thick as natural human hair would be so if it's plaited it's going to look very thin so if I fishtail it it's going to be a bulkier plait. In order to fishtail I need to split the hair directly down the centre part And what we're going to do is basically we're going to have one side each hand we're going to grab a front side portion and we're going to cross it over to the inside portion of the other side and then we're going to do the same and we're going to pull it over to this side we're also going to keep this reasonably loose because this needs to sit over my shoulder when it's done and you can already see this is going to make a very fat plait. This is going to work out better for wigs that are thinner. So I'm just going to focus on plaiting this up for a bit. There you go. So there's one big puffy plait. So now we're just going to do the same on the other side. And then once we've done that, we're going to put some gel and some hairspray on it just to set it. Right, so that's both sides plaited. I'm just going to tug a little on the top just to make sure that I've completely covered the wig net on the top and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some hair gel and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spray a bit on my hands and I'm just gonna kind of smooth my hands down the plaits I'm especially going to smooth over the tip of the end just to save it from fraying. So I don't know if you can see but the flyaway situation is a bit improved on this side just because we're gelling them down. I mean because of the character I'm doing if the plaits want to fall out a little bit it's not the end of the world but still. And we're just going to do the same on the other side and then we're just going to grab some hairspray. It sets so hard it's great. And now these shouldn't slip. I'm going to leave that to set. Okay, so now that we've got this wig all set and it's fully dried, we're going to get ready to put it away into storage. But I thought the easiest way to show that is to pull out the other wig again, which I've already put in storage. We can take it out layer by layer and we can see what it is. Here is the other wig. As you can see, it's inside. This is the bag that it that the wig came in, which is a bit big. If your wig doesn't come in a bag or you lose the bag, then a large freezer bag, large Ziploc bag is basically what you want. Pull it out of the freezer bag. Put that down there for now. And then inside you can see, I've wrapped the wig cap around for safekeeping because that way I don't lose my wig cap. And then wrapped around it is another thing that the wig came in. Again, not the end of the world if you've lost this. Just wrap the wig cap around it. But if you still have it, what we have wrapped around it is this hairnet, which is just, again, to try and decrease the tangles. And you can see I've pulled her out. And she's not knotted at all. She's pretty happy to wear, so we're going to put her on. lace front so I've got to make sure that I've got it far enough back. This wig has combs inside the inside the net so I don't need to worry too much about pins. Oh that's not on too badly. Right so as you can see this wig is pretty happy to be worn straight out. I could go to whatever convention I'm doing right now. If I was, I might just stick a couple of extra hairpins in this just for safety's sake, but I'm only going to be wearing this in the house today. So if you're wearing the wig down, but you put it away plaited, you are going to have to quickly comb it out, do a quick finger comb just to resort the wig out, just like you would do with regular hair. I, again, obviously would recommend if you're planning on wearing a wig loose all day, possibly giving it a quick spray of detangling mist or putting some light gel on just on the tips of the hair just to try and discourage it from knotting. So when it comes to putting this wig away I've just taken it off. It's bothering me. I'm having a bad hair day apparently. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the end of the plait, shove that in 
If I didn't have this hair clip on it, I'd turn it inside out, but I'm concerned about knocking feathers out of it, so I'm not going to do that. I then want to take the wig net and just stretch it over the wig. I'm then, just so I don't lose it, going to wrap my uh, wig cap around this as well. So I've got this sort of ball of hair. And I'm just going to place it inside the bag that the wig came in. Give it more glue in. I'm just going to push all of the air out of that. And then we have this flattened plastic bag, which is perfect for storing away or putting in the luggage for a trip. If your wig is in a lot worse state than either of these two were and you really do need more help with detangling, the tutorial that I've used before and found really helpful is by Iwasaka Miyuki and I'll link to it in the description and in a note or whatever those things are. Okay, well I hope this video was useful to everyone. Please feel free to leave us a comment if you think there's something we missed. Who knows, we might make a whole second video based on anything else that I've missed. If you want to see more videos from us, please subscribe. If you enjoy this video, please give us a like. If you didn't like this video and we were just saying the obvious, give us a dislike. I've left our various social media stuff in the doobly. And just to remind you all that I am still doing regular Twitch streams every Wednesday evening at 7pm to 10pm UK time. So if you want to tune into those, please tune into twitch.tv forward slash Castle to watch me do a draw. Good luck with your wigs and I hope to see some of you for our next video. Bye! It was fun together.